I'm Gemma and this is Nonfic Books. Um, I have another review video for you today and that is Madeline Bunting's The Plot, a biography of an English acre. And this was published by Granter in 2009 and is 277 pages long. This is the story of this acre of land that Madeline Bunting's father bought just on the edge of the North York Moors and eventually built a chapel to create a sort of memorial and to fill with his sculptures because he was a stone carver. This I came across on Eve Alexandria's channel, which I will leave down below, mainly in relation to her more recent book, um, the, a Love of Con the Love of Country, a Hebridean Journey, I believe. But this particularly piqued my interest because I live not very far away from this place and had actually been talking to a friend of mine about walking up to visit this chapel that I hadn't ever actually been to. And weirdly, this book then came into my life only a week or two later without me even realising that this was about the exact same place until I started reading it. So uh, this particularly interested me and I have to say it did not disappoint. Madeline Bunting's writing is really enjoyable to read and the, she manages to get a great balance between a lot of information about her father and their relationship, which was uh, pretty difficult in places, the history of this entire area, and then what this particular plot has come to symbolise for her and her family. She gets a really nice balance because if any of those things had been too heavily focused on, it could have become a bit boring. Her father is not an overly renowned sculptor, um, there is not an enormous amount of his work surviving, although there is still plenty because he's obviously he's only relatively recent. Um, and I think too much of the very, very local history, it could have become very boring unless you actually know this area. Um, if you don't know this area, there are lots of interesting sort of photographs and maps showing you the area at the beginning of every page. There we are which illustrate the sort of routes that she talks about, the um, because this is on a drover's road, through going up through the moors, which would have been one of the most sort of main routes going from Scotland down through towards York, across the moors. So this would have actually, though it's very quiet and isolated currently, have been a much more sort of populated and traversed place than it currently is. Her writing is really enjoyable to read. I haven't read anything by her before, but I certainly will be picking up um, A Love of Country after this because she really manages to capture a sense of place. And even if you don't know this place, I think you'll be able to really get a sense of the area. I'm very, very familiar with it, obviously, having lived here for a fair while now. Um, and I really think it did capture the heart of the place even if she's possibly a little bit more negative about this sort of quiet countryside nature of it, which obviously, as I have chosen to live here rather than being born here and then getting out, because she now lives in London, I believe, um, that uh, I'm probably a little bit more positive about that than she is. You go through the history of the very specific place, how um, it links to, it would have been a farm linking to others around it, how sheep farming in the area and the religious aspect because we had in this part of the country a large number of big religious houses, many of which are still very well known like Revo or Fountains, but the smaller ones that were well uh, forgotten now like Byland were still some of the biggest in the country and that obviously had a massive effect on the surrounding area and especially Byland, which is probably the closest to this plot, they, um, the Cistercians put in a massive amount of drainage and changed um, streams and river courses, so they actually affected the landscape an enormous amount. Her relationship with her father I thought was dealt with very nicely. Obviously, I don't know him or her, so um, it's hard to see exactly how, but looking at the reviews on Amazon, there's quite a few people saying that they knew him and that it seemed to be a fairly accurate representation of him, both in the positive and the negative sides. Because while he was quite difficult to be part of the family with, he was quite inspirational and had a large social group of friends 
who he entertained in this chapel that he built in this sort of isolated up a steep hill area. It's a really enjoyable book. I really recommend picking it up if you're interested in this small scale history and it's one of the best ones I've read. There's been quite a trend over the last sort of five, ten years of doing these much smaller localised histories, always bringing everything back to a field or a smaller area like that. And I think this is one of the best ones I've read because she manages to keep it interesting, bring in enough history, but then also focal on, focus on the locality without making it too repetitive or boring. And in a fairly decent sized book, I think that's pretty impressive. It's really enjoyable. Her writing's fantastic and I really recommend picking either this up or A Love of Country, which might appeal to slightly more people because I think the sort of romance of the Hebridean Islands probably will grab people a little bit more than an acre in the North Yorkshire Moor borderlands, but this is very, very good and I highly recommend it. So I'm really, really glad that I came across this and I would recommend, if it sounds like your thing, picking it up. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below and I'll see you in a video soon. Bye!